Welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day and our case count so coronavirus is 11,964. We are told that 58 people so far have died of uh, the virus and a lot more are uh, recovering. And I'm sure you know that health uh, care centers across the world uh, are, are you know, inundated with a lot of numbers, people reporting cases of coronavirus. So there's not a lot of attention on other ailments. And so, and people are really increasingly getting scared of going to health facilities. And so when it comes to times like that, mobile doctors, we call them, come in handy. And I have one in studio with me, Dr. John Akwe Awa, who is a mobile doctor. And I just want to ask him how business has been. I don't know if I should call it business has been, I mean, this within the spirit. Good morning. Good morning. So tell me, what did you train here in Ghana? Yes, I did. Okay, where? At Kolebu? At uh, Kolebu and then United Kingdom and United States. Okay, okay. And, and what has been your observation so far with coronavirus and access to the various health centers? Well, uh, to be honest with you, most of the clinics and hospitals are empty because people are scared to present themselves for treatment mm -hmm. to the hospitals. So it's been empty. Mm -hmm. uh, we are mobile doctor um, services. Mm -hmm. We started, in, we've been in business um, since March. Mm -hmm. And um, we- Since March this year? This, this year, okay. yes. Okay. Since the outbreak of the virus here in Ghana? Yes. Okay. And we realized that uh, people really need our services. Okay. Because they are How scared. So? Yeah, they, they, they're, they're scared to go to the hospital. Okay. Or the clinics. So when they call us, we come and then we realize that, oh yeah, you have many more problems than, 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 than you think. Mm -hmm. So we're able to provide uh, medical uh, services, we're able to um, provide lab services at home, medication can be delivered to the house, we need physical therapy, we arrange for all that at home, we have even chiropractic services in the house. Mm -hmm. So we, we actually uh, segregate you from going to the hospital mm -hmm. and you don't get exposed to the, the usual hospital disease processes, you know, that we can, mm -hmm. that we generally meet when we go to the clinics. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so what you do is, so you have a team? Yes. You have a team. And so when people call you, it doesn't matter where they are across the country. It doesn't you have, matter. You have, you have uh, um, team members all over the country. Yes. So when you go, uh, what are the processes you go through? I mean, taking care of these patients? Well, first of all, them. before we get there, we had to... Uh, make sure you don't have any coronavirus mm -hmm. you know, suspicion. Mm -hmm. If you do have it, then we, there is a proceed protocol that we, we, we... You don't manage coronavirus cases? No, we don't. Okay. We don't. So when you, when you come to me and have fever and I'm showing all the symptoms of COVID-19, what do you do? Then we advise, we actually give you a number to call or we arrange for you to go to the proper centers designated by the government for okay. the treatment of the coronavirus cases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we only manage patients who are not coronavirus patients at home. You only manage patients who are not coronavirus, but there are people who are scared of stigma. And so even when they are showing signs, they don't want to go. What do you do for people like well, that? Well, you must realize that most coronavirus cases are can recover by themselves. Mm -hmm. um, most of them don't need to be in a hospital. Mm -hmm. Those that have to be in a hospital will make sure that they get to the hospital because you know there are signs of of danger when you see them. Mm -hmm. So you make sure you make a referral to the appropriate medical center for mm -hmm. treatment. Mm -hmm. But those that do have it, they can, most of them who have it do recover by themselves at home. So mm -hmm. they don't have to go anywhere. Okay. So we just only monitor them and make sure so they those are uh, asymptomatic patients, those who are not showing any signs. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So they can recover by, their, by themselves mm -hmm. at home. Yes. They can okay. Recover. So what are some of the disease you treat so that and w which of them are very prominent? Like how, how often and, and how often do you treat them? So um, other than coronavirus, you know, there are other disease processes in okay. Ghana, okay. like hypertension, like diabetes, like kidney failure, like infections, like pneumonia. And these are for like old people? No, no, for old people. I mean, there are people, who, a lot of people have these diseases. Who are be, you don't have to be old to have those, pro those mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you don't know that you have it until you get checked. So you realize that the healthcare delivery system in Ghana is geared towards therapy rather than prevention, mm -hmm. right? So you can be working with diabetes for a long time or mm -hmm. hypertension for a long time, mm -hmm. and you don't know it until you have a stroke or heart attack, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we want to raise awareness that, yes, even though you look well, there could be something wrong. Mm -hmm. And we want to gear 
her attention from treating treat you mm -hmm. to preventing you from getting sick. Mm -hmm. So when we go to the house, we re you realize that what you call us for, say for simple headache or cough, say, by the way, you have hypertension, by the way, you have kidney failure, then we address those things with you. And, if, and then you become, you become aware that, oh yes, I do have these conditions in addition mm -hmm. to what you call me for. How about pregnant women? People who have to go for antenatal. I have got a lot of people send me messages about how scared they are to go to the hospital because of COVID-19. Pregnant women, what do you do to them? When you, you know, at the moment, we are not providing any services for pregnant women mm -hmm. yet. But it will come along the line when we'll get to know our services. Okay. Okay, you haven't had any call from a pregnant woman yet? No. How about nursing mothers? Um, we have, have we've seen a few pediatric patients. Okay. You know they call us for their child being sick, and we go and attend to uh, you know our children. So we do mm -hmm. attend to children as well. And what what are what do you see? I mean, what have been your observations, especially with nursing mothers and their babies? What are they presenting with? Usually fevers. And okay. For children mainly, ear yeah, infection, throat infection, malaria, things like that, mm -hmm. and they are scared to take them to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And for the mothers, sometimes they have infections, or they are. But the parts, you know, that needs to be taken mm -hmm. care of. They are scared mm -hmm. to go to the hospital. We are able to treat the whole things at home. And most of these conditions can be, treat, can be treated at home. Okay, so how about if I have to do labs, for instance? So you come to me and I'm presenting a few symptoms and I have to do labs. Do you do the labs for me instantly? Oh, yes. The labs are all done at home. Most okay. of the labs can be done at home. So the blood, the... the, the, the and how accurate is that? <laughs> Very accurate okay. because there's some no the, okay the specimen is drawn at home okay and it's taken to a lab to test uh huh right okay. I just wanted that clarity <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. yes okay so the specimen is taken at home yes and then you take it to the lab yes so it means it takes a while to get the result within twenty four hours within twenty four yes. hours yes okay yeah, we we'll get a, and we'll call you back with the result and tell you this is what we got okay so between the time I call you. In the time you get to me, how, how long does it take? Usually we can see within 24 hours. If you call it this morning, we can see you by the evening. Okay. And the lab will be done the following day. Okay. So I'm speaking to Dr. John Akwe Awa, who is a mobile doctor. And he's saying that, um, I mean, if you are scared of going to the hospital because of COVID-19, you can just call them and they will have you treated. But I've been joined on the phone uh, by Grace Kwashi, who is uh, with, uh, I beg your pardon, let me get uh, the name right. I've been joined on the phone by uh, Lucia Adai, who is the Executive Secretary of the Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Association of Ghana. There's a situation uh, with, uh, with them. Uh, they, they, they're saying that they will not give uh, government any more medications from July 1 because government owes them to a tune of uh, some 300 million U.S. dollars over a period of five years. Good morning. Good morning. I hope I got the facts right. You said government government owes you how much? So it's three hundred million cities. Three hundred million cities. Cumulatively for up to five years. Okay, so three hundred million cities, not dollars. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Okay. So exactly, uh, why are you withdrawing services uh, now on on July one? I mean, someone would say it's insensitive. Okay, so to put it in context, we all know that we are not in normal times. So we have challenges generally uh, with the situation. There's been disruptions in supply chain. We've had to stock good quantities of our raw materials to be able to ensure that there's good medications for everybody in Ghana. Now, the challenge is that we, not, we are not redoing the supplies generally. What we are doing is that there are some recalcitrant um, clients who work in the government institutions, for instance, the RMSs, there are some of them that don't pay their debts. So what we are saying is that until they pay cash or they pay up to the last three months or they have some bank guarantee, we will not be able to supply to them because our businesses are also collapsing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your businesses are collapsing, but it's taking five years. Have you engaged government over these concerns you're raising, Lucia? Yes, several times. So to be able to give you a certain perspective, the, the reality is that um, these institutions receive funds sometimes from the National Health Insurance or from the Ministry of Health, um, and then these agencies also receive money from the Ministry of Finance. Mm -hmm. But there's not much transparency. So every time you engage these health facilities or the ministry, what you keep hearing is that um, this 
institution has not been paid yet, and that institution has not been paid yet. We believe that excuse is not good enough. And now more than ever, we need to protect and promote the pharmaceutical car industry. Mm. So it's very important to ensure that we support the company so that they don't collapse. Mm -hmm. Because what we know is that every country is trying to protect their, their pharmaceutical car industry to be able to take care of their citizens. And we should do the same. If we allow these people who are buying raw materials are cash paying workers every month, paying high utility bills to actually collapse, they will not have any medicines at all. And, and these the are medicines will be available on the open market and to customers who are paying on time. And these are concerns of only pharmaceutical manufacturers, those who import we don't know yet. And so, so you it's manufacture... A joint statement. So it's the pharmaceutical industry. So okay. if you read um, the, the press release, you realize that it is coming from the chamber of pharmacy who are mainly imported and also the manufacturers. Mm. Okay, so I know that you have a few challenges at the ports. And uh, the issue of demorage is also... Uh, you know, taking a lot of your funds. Is that the reason, the main reason why you're saying that by July you are withdrawing services? So I could say that that is one of the reasons, but that's not the main reason okay. because what we are facing is we have um, debt over the period, we have bank charges, um, we are buying cash from our suppliers, raw materials, and we are having to give it on credit for more than 12 months. And it's generally more acceptable, you know, because we are, we are having our working capital deplete over the period of time. Mm -hmm. And we have loans that we are supposed to service. And I mean, if we are not um, credit worthy with some of these suppliers, we lose our working capital and our credibility. Mm -hmm. So we need to safeguard the industry. So what mm -hmm. we are saying is that if you are a client who has not been paying us regularly and you've not paid us over the period, mm -hmm. what we are trying to say is try and pay us up to the last three months and we'll be able to supply you medicine. Okay. However, medicines will be available on the market for clients to be able to purchase. Just wrapping up with you, uh, what do you anticipate will be the impact of this if you indeed withdraw services on July 1? So the impact is that um, most customers who are going to health facilities where they receive medicines um, on NHIS will not be able to do so. They will have to buy from the open market. Mm. Now because of what is going on with other ports, with the demand of the port charges, the cost of medicines are also going up. Mm. And we know that um, cash flows for most people is becoming tough and challenging. So we are pleading with the stakeholders, the government, to be able to give us some transparency and to be able to resolve this by paying our, our, our debt to us so that we can move on and grow the industry to be able to protect um, the country. We are grateful that you made time to speak with us this morning. Lucia Ada is Executive Secretary of the Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Thank Association you. of Ghana. We are hoping that this will be resolved as soon as possible. And we are in the studio with Dr. John Akwe Awa, who is a mobile doctor. This must be scary for you. I mean, we'll get to a point where you have access to medications because they are saying that uh, they will not supply government. We have to pay cash, especially for your patients. Is it not scary for that you? That is scary that you, are, you found a, a patient with a problem and you write a prescription and the patient can't get the medication. Mm. That, that is the most uncomfortable you know, situation you find yourself in as a physician. What would you advocate as we wrap up? Well, I would just make sure that I want to advocate that the, the government or whoever is responsible for putting their bills to allow these factors to run to help them to run these services so that we can all benefit from it. Okay. Let me give you the opportunity to give out your numbers for those who want to call you uh, so that they are unable to go to the hospitals and they want to call you for some medical checkup or some treatment. What, what numbers should they call? Oh, we have our office number, which is 030-254-7499. Mm -hmm. I repeat, 030-254-7499. Mm -hmm. And... We have another number, 059-304-1520. Okay. Dr. John Akwe, we are grateful that you made time to speak with us this morning. Dr. John Akwe, is a mobile doctor. So if you're looking for someone to call, if you're unable to visit the various OPDs, you can call them and they'll attend to you.